So a few of you guys have asked uh, in the comments for me to review this uh, tool I have, the diagnostic tool. Um, it's called a Launch um, X431. Um, this is a V plus uh, V4.0. Um, like I say, I, I got this on Amazon. I got it about a year ago. There might be an updated one out now, maybe a 5.0 or something. Who knows? I haven't looked into it. Um, I got it, I paid, I believe it was like around $900 or so. Um, and it comes in this pretty big case. Uh, you can see the tool itself is right there. Um, it has all these various adapters. To be honest, I haven't used a single one of them. Um, this looks like it's an old Mercedes uh, adapter. Um, see, they're all labeled here. Um, you've got various Honda and Chrysler and Ford, but I'm assuming these are all for like old older models that have these specific connectors. Um, haven't used any of them. Um, there are more connectors in here. Um, this one looks like it's used for maybe power diagnostics. There's various adapters right there. Um, I'm sure that's all described maybe in this manual, but to be honest, I never even looked at it. Um, I just kind of only been using the, uh, the tablet itself. So the tablet's pretty straightforward. Um, the, uh, the little OBD connector just hides in there and it, you put it in there to charge it. It's, I think it has a battery built in or maybe not. I think it might, it might actually power itself off the car. But anyway, you plug it into the car um, and then it's Bluetooth and it connects to this, uh, it's an Android um, um, tablet. So um, when you first set it up, you hook it up to your Wi-Fi and then it comes with a code and then you register it. And it's uh, most of the updates that it has, um, I think are free, uh, but there are some that um, they want you to uh, to keep an updated subscription uh, for. So I haven't uh, paid any more money for it. So the, the first year was free. Uh, it looks like right now there is a, a firmware update and then there's a whole bunch of, usually there's usually a, a ton of updates on these. And uh, like you can um, refresh it and see if any more updates pop up or I can, I can update it or I'll do that later. But um, when you have it connected to the car, um, well, and you see there's also all, all sorts of other options. So you could have, uh, if TPMS, for example, if you buy uh, a, a TPMS uh, Bluetooth um, dongle, you can uh, use that and use it to reset your TPMS sensors. Because um, on, on Fords, for example, uh, you need the special tool to be able to uh, reprogram the uh, the sensors if you replace them or sometimes they they just lose connection and need to be reprogrammed uh, and there's also all these other uh, service function for example you go in there you can do all sorts of resets and abs bleeding and whatever else it all depends on what the, the car needs like on the newer cars for example when you're ble bleeding the brakes you usually have to do an abs bleed so and um if you go to vehicle coverage, for example, it'll show you um, all the all the cars that that particular program can do. So, I mean, it's got a, a ton of cars there. You've got 7,000 different models. Um, but otherwise, you um, the way I usually do it is I go to Intelligent Diagnose and see right now it's trying to connect to a car. So um, I'm gonna go outside in a minute here and connect it to the to, to the G63 and uh, show you how it connects to the car. Um, and then I'm gonna do a quick scan on it to see um, if our O2 sensor repair is still good. I mean, obviously right now it's not gonna connect because it's, uh, it's not connected to anything. We'll connect it to the car and we'll give it a try. And I also wanted to show you guys the uh, this, the Mercedes um, multiplexer that I have. So this is a, a Chinese clone. 
This is a C3 version. So I've, I've had this one for probably about 10 years and it still works fine. Like this, it'll connect to the uh, the G63, but I think realistically the uh, the coverage, uh, the vehicle coverage for these C3s, I think they'll go up to like 2008. Like this thing worked great on my old, I had a, a 2006 uh, CLS 55 and it worked great on there. Uh, I, I was able to program whatever I wanted to change all the settings and then do all sorts of uh, data logging and that sort of thing. But that's why I have this old uh, Panasonic laptop and, uh, and that multiplexer. So for the newer ones, I think now there's a C4 and a C5. But on the on the newer Mercedes, you need an active subscription um, to be able to program stuff because I don't think there's a way around it. But there might be now, I'm not sure. But anyway, so instead of lugging this whole thing around, it's a lot easier to just have this tablet with the wireless uh, with the wireless Bluetooth, and um, it's a really handy tool to have. I take it on the, if I go ever go on a road trip or something, I always take it with me. Um, just so that if I ever have an issue, um, if I get a random check engine light or something, I can just plug in and, uh, and see what's wrong instead of, um, being broken down on the side of the road. So anyway, let's go, uh, plug it in and, uh, we'll scan the car and see what we, uh, see what we find. Okay. So we're out of the car now. So we take our Bluetooth. Uh, OBD connector on the G-Wagon. It's a bit of a pain to get it in there. It's way under here in the corner. It's kind of hard to see, but so I plugged it in. You heard it beep, so it powered up. So now we can turn this on, turn our uh, ignition on. Turn this radio off. All right, so now if we go to Intelligent Diagnose, it will connect. Oh, now it wants to update. For some reason, it decided that it needs to update right this minute. So I'll pick this up after the update. All right, so the firmware updated and now the tool connected. So after it connects, it gives you a couple options. You can do diagnostic, scan history and quick access. Um, if you go to quick access, um, and this one I usually select this, it gives you a, a bunch of different options for the different G, G uh, wagons. So we can do a health report, a system scan and a system selection. So health report, that'll scan every module that takes a little while. So for this video, we'll just go to system selection. And then we'll select uh, the ECM. Ignition's on, we know, yes. So now it'll connect to the ECM. And we can uh, check to see if we have any new fault codes. We probably have, uh, yeah, so sensor two on each bank. Um, I get those codes because I obviously don't have any cats and I still haven't had this thing tuned. Um, so that's why I have those codes. So they just keep coming back. So I'm not too worried about those. So now we can go to read data stream. And if we go back to this uniformity page, we can see what our values are at now. So I've been driving this thing for about two days now since I've replaced the uh, the O2 sensor. And you see the, the right cylinder bank is now at 0 0.11. Whereas before I replaced the sensor, it was at like 16. And then the left is at 0 0.79, which uh, that's pretty much the value it's, it's always been at. So um, I don't know if replacing the left O2 sensor would bring that value down. I don't think, I don't know if it matters or not, but that's where it's at. So um, I haven't seen any, any other faults pop up or anything. Um, I just um, filled this thing up with fuel um, earlier today. So I've, I've, uh, should have all the old gas out of it, whatever was in there, if, if there was a, any issue with the uh, old gas. Um, but yeah, so, um, and it also lets you do a bunch of other stuff. So if you go to 
uh, like I showed you guys before in, in variant coding um, you can change options um, this is these are options in the in the engine computer and in every module um, there will be some variant options that you can change um, not necessarily um, this tool will let you do it. For example, if you had the Mercedes tool, then you were like a C4 multiplexer, um, it would do the same thing. So you would you would have variant coding options that you could go into like your, in your transmission, for example, you could go in there and you could change um, your uh, gear ratio or tire size or whatever, if you wanted to. Um, and um, also, if you are, if you ever replace your ECM, you can uh, you can back up your coding and then you you can restore the variant coding. Um, or if you go to setting changeover, um, it gives you some options there: enabling of engine start after crash event, maximum vehicle speed limit. You can change. So this one's set at 200 kilometers an hour. Um, or 210 for an AMG. I mean, I don't really think this thing should go any faster than that. It's a big brick, so I think 210 is probably good enough. Um, I don't know what this Prem Air system is. It says it's not fitted, so if I don't know what it is, it probably probably doesn't have it. So anyway, that's kind of this uh, launch um, X431 in a nutshell. Uh, pretty good little system. I think there's a bunch bunch of these uh, similar systems out there. This is kind of the only one I've tried. Um, I think Autel makes similar ones, and they range in price from a couple thousand to like seven, eight thousand dollars, depending on the kind of unit that you get and what it can do. But for kind of with the stuff that I do, um, this is good enough for me. Um, I don't get into um, like airbag module resets or any, anything like that. I don't do car rebuilds, so for now anyway. So um, I haven't really messed with trying to reset any airbags or anything like that uh, with this tool. But I can show you, um, like for example, the transmission control module. We can go in there. So same thing like it's you can do uh variant coding for the transmission so see so you can you can change what if you wanted to change whatever like say for example if you changed your um control unit um like i think i might have to do that on this on this transmission um i may need to change the uh the conductor plate um, so then it would need SCN coding afterwards. So uh, theoretically, this one should be, I should be able to back up the old coding and restore it onto the new one. But I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, Mercedes is telling me that it's a Mercedes only thing, but I guess we'll see. If I ever have to do it, I'll give it a try. Um, so it gives you all these options to, uh, to do any changes you want to do so yeah this is a pretty decent little tool and like i say um it probably saved me uh well over the uh, the thousand dollars that i paid for it in um and in, in scan hours that the dealer would have charged me so um yeah that's about it if you guys have any questions let me know but uh thanks for watching this is just a quick little overview of the uh, the tool